and this would be the last uh, lecture about section 2.1. We studied uh, relative frequencies and histograms in this section. We said that uh, to display the relative frequency, we graph a histogram like this. So this is the histogram. In fact, we call it a frequency histogram because you see the frequencies on the y-axis and the classes on the x-axis. So this is called a frequency histogram. Well, uh, somebody could ask, what about the relative frequency distribution? Now we could have a relative frequency distribution. What is a relative frequency distribution? Like this, you have the classes and the relative frequency column. The classes with the relative frequency column is called relative frequency distribution. Is there a graph for the relative frequency distribution? And the answer is yes. And the graph is called relative frequency histogram. So you can graph histogram also. Classes again on the x-axis. You put 0, 30, 30, 60, 0, 30, 60, 90 on the x-axis. And then on the y-axis, instead of dealing with the frequencies, you put the relative frequencies. So for example, you look here to the, the relative frequencies. The highest is 0.21, I think. Yeah, 0.21. The smallest is 0 0.00. So you need to divide the y-axis accordingly. For, for example, you start by 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, up to 0.21, if it is possible, or 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2. So the proportions would be on the y-axis. And then you uh, sketch the histogram. Okay, you graph the histogram. So this is called a relative frequency histogram. Okay. So... A relative frequency histogram is formed in the same manner as frequency histogram, but the vertical axis displays relative frequencies rather than frequencies. That's the only difference between a relative frequency histogram and a frequency histogram. Okay, what 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 else? Well, we sometimes have the cumulative relative frequency. What about the cumulative relative frequency distribution? So this time I have the classes and the cumulative relative frequency. If you remember how to obtain the cumulative relative frequency, we start by the same relative frequency here, 0 0.0295, and then we add plus 0 0.0557 and we get 0 0.0852, and we continue, okay? So the last number in the relative, in the, in the cumulative relative frequency column would be one, because if you add all the relative frequencies, you get one. So always the last number in the cumulative relative frequency column is one. So now we have the cumulative relative frequency column and the classes, is there a graph? that displays the cumulative relative frequency, okay? And the answer is yes. And this graph is called OGIV, okay? So what is the OGIV? It's a, a graphical representation of the cumulative relative frequency, okay? It's a line, it is a line. So the OGIV is not like the histogram, it is a line. Line connected some points, okay? Those points are plotted above the upper limit of each class at a height corresponding to the cumulative relative frequency. So the height on the y-axis, you have the cumulative relative frequency, and on the x-axis, you have the classes. The upper limit of the class with the cumulative relative frequency uh, will give you a point and you connect these points to get the OGIV. So this is the OGIV, okay? You can see that the classes again, 0, 30, 60, 90, similar here, 
actually you are taking the lower limits okay the lower limits this is the lower limits you are putting 0 30 60 here on the x axis but then on the y axis these numbers the cumulative relative frequency these numbers 0 0.0295 with 30 with the upper limit with 0 0 so always 0 0 but 30 you put 0 0.0295 60 will be 0 0.0852 0 0.2 with uh, 90 and so on so the upper limit you take the cumulative relative frequency with the upper limit okay uh, and you connect these points you get the OGIV uh, remember the histogram from the histogram you can determine the center of the data the shape of the distribution whether all the data are in the middle most of the data are in the middle or most of the data are in the left side or in the right side okay this is the shape of the distribution also the spread of the data the spread is it uh, the more variability than other data okay spread of the data so you can see all of this from the histogram from the OGIV, you cannot see the center or the spread or the shape of the distribution you can't but what you can see uh, this question which we ask and how many observations are uh, what is the proportion what is the proportion of observations that are less than or equal to 210 for example so 210 if you want the number of observations less than or equal to 210 you go to 210 i i think 210 i cannot see really this one this is 210 if you go to 210 up okay here for this number 80,000 will will give you yeah it is right. less than record here 0 0.8738 uh, the observations the observations the, the proportion of observations is 0 0.8738 that's the number the the proportion of observations with values less than or equal to 210 so you can answer this question uh, using the cumulative frequency distribution or the OGIV Okay, let us solve a question about the OGIV. We will solve question 2.4. Here, the OGIV is graphed, okay, produce the relative frequency distribution from a sample size of 50, so that's N, that gave rise to the following OGIV. So this is the OGIV, okay. And what he needs, the relative frequency distribution produce the relative frequency distribution. Well, the relative frequency distribution means a table in which you have the classes in the first column, and here you have the relative frequencies. This is called a relative frequency distribution. Well, we have the OGIV, and from the OGIV, we can find the cumulative cumulative relative frequency. So I can begin by finding the cumulative relative frequency of each class, and then I use the cumulative relative frequency to find the relative frequency of each class. So what about the classes? You can see the classes from here, from the x-axis. It's clear that the first class is from 0 to 100. So you write it like this. You say 0 up to less than 100. I can do it like this, okay, from 0 to less than 100. Can write it like this or write zero and under 100 okay and then below 100 so all the second class will start from 100 below 200 the third class below 300 the third the fourth class below 400 the fifth okay less than 500 and then we have from 500 to 600. 600 is the last number. So this is the last class which has data between 500 and less than 600. Okay, what about the cumulative relative frequency? The first class from zero to 100, what is the, the, the number uh, related to 100? So if you sketch a horizontal line, you get 0.2. So at 100, the cumulative relative frequency is 0.2 at 200 okay the cumulative relative frequency is 
4 at 300 you go to 300 the cumulative relative frequency is 0.5 approximately any what what you can see approximately uh, 400 i think 400 uh, is about uh, 0.6 okay so 0.6 uh, 500 500 is almost 1 1 601 maybe it's not it's not one it could be the 500 it could be 0.999 I'm, I'm not sure if i'll put it one one okay but this these are the cumulative relative frequencies now to find how to construct the relative frequency distribution you need to find the relative frequencies how the first number is similar 0.2 the second number you subtract Add it. You subtract 0.4 minus 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Why you subtract? Because how do we get 0.4? By adding. adding. To go from relative frequency to cumulative relative frequency, you add. So to go from cumulative relative frequency to relative frequency, you subtract. So 0.45 minus 0.4 would be 0 0.1. 0 0.6 minus 0 0.5, 0 0.1. 1 mm -hmm. minus 0 0.6, 0 0.4. 1 minus 1 is 0. So this is the relative frequency distribution. That's it. That's the answer to the question. But yeah, if if he uh, asked, no, no, no questions, no the... questions, no questions, please. What about if he asks, produce the frequency distribution, not the relative frequency? What about the frequency distribution? You can you can find the frequencies if he asks about them. You have right. the relative frequencies. You need n in this case. Well, n in, is given in the question, which is 50. So you multiply 0 0.2 times 50, 0 0.1 times 50, and you will get all the frequencies. I stop here. Uh, thank you very much. And now I will receive all of your uh, questions.